Good evening, everyone. My name's Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and my face is huge on there. <laughs> Hold on a second. Wee! There we go. Transition that over. <clears throat> that looks a little bit better, and yeah. Good evening, everyone. My name's Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and this is Let's Make a Game. Um, so I have spent the last couple of days really working hard on an admin panel, and I kind of wanted to show that to you. And I also invite um, exploiters. <clears throat> I do invite you to actually try and attempt to get to the panel. Um, and if you can, report it back to me what you find and what you can get to and what you can do. Screenshots to Twitter would be awesome. Just let me know. Um, but one fair warning, I put a catch in here and I'll show you where everything is at. Okay, so right up here inside these starter GUIs, I have an admin panel and it will appear to everyone, but whenever they're, uh, whenever somebody jumps into the server, it checks to see if that person is an admin. If they are, they get the panel. If they're not, it destroys the panel. Um, this is held on the server side under a script called admin. Okay. So right down here, right off the bat, um, game when player uh, game dot players dot player added. Hold on, I'll zoom in a little bit more. We connect check admin and check band. All right, or check band. <clears throat> so the check admin says if this player right uh, player dot name equals admin data get async user ID, then we wait for the child of the player GUI and wait for the child admin and we enable it. Um, this is using data stores, by the way. Um, so admin, uh, if the first thing is DSS equals game get service data store service. All right, and then they use um, admin data equals DSS get data store admin. So that's the specific data store that I'm pulling back. And then what I do is I do if player.name equals admin gets async player.user ID, Basically, I make a request to the admin data store uh, for the user's ID. It gets pulled back in, and if the player name is equal to that value, because I store the ID and the name of the person that's an admin, then it gives them the ability to use, um, use the panel. So check admin first. It enables it, and then we return true. That way I can use check admin later on down, down the scripts. So every time an admin call is made, it checks to see if you are an admin. If you are, awesome. If not, bad things are going to happen. Because <laughs> you you should not be making requests to the admin remote event unless you're an admin. So if you create something on your server side to make a request to the admin RE, or here, I'll even show it to you. Inside replicated storage, there's an admin remote event right here. And that's, that's what we were making the calls to and from. So, um, from here, we go else panel equals wait for child player GUI admin. If the panel exists, we destroy it. And the reason we have to have the if in there is every single time the person responds, uh, if the panel has been destroyed the first time, then it's not going to be there the second time. So we can't destroy it. So just check to see if the panel's there. If it is destroy it. Uh, and we return false so we can do a check. So check admin, this person. Is that person uh, an admin? No, then uh, check for the panel. Is the panel there? Yes, destroy it. If the panel's not there, no, and just return false. So then we did uh, check ban. So the ban ID equals the, the player's ID. So whatever your player ID is, whenever you come into the game, I set that to the ban ID. And then I make a P call because I want, I want to make sure that this call actually goes through on, on the other calls. If it fails, okay, we can, we can fix it or whatnot later, but the ban, I absolutely want to check to see if, uh, see if something happens. Um, so ban, uh, get as, uh, async ban ID. Then we come down here. Um, if success, if ban reason, if there's any reason at all, right? And we'll get one if the person's on the ban list, then it automatically kicks the player and gives them the reason of the ban. So, and ban reason, um, I, I've given access to my admins in, um, and my protégés in Discord to have access to the admin panel here. So if, um, 
But I've got a bunch of different ideas that I'm going to do, and I hope I can get them done. But for now, well, I'll just keep going. So uh, right here, this is for what happens whenever we get an admin command. Uh, all the rest of the stuff, this is receiving um, from the panel. <clears throat> so um, let's see, right here under the admin panel, this is the script. And I'll actually, here, let me, let me show you what this looks like real quick. So I spent some time designing this little admin button. You click it, it opens up so you can see all the peoples. Uh, you got ban, kick, freeze, unfreeze, glitch to the sky, bring to me, teleport to, break arms, give admin, remove admin. These commands are only available to myself. Um, my other admins cannot make admins. So, and then to be determined, to be determined. These two buttons I have not actually, there's nothing programmed to them. But I've made this where um, every time you open up the admin panel, and I need to fix that so it refreshes automatically, but it will show the people's name of everybody that's logged in. So if I click on Code Primate, Code Primate becomes the target, and then I can give a, a reason um, because, oops, caps locks is on, because I'm testing things. And then I can do a kick like that. You were kicked from the game because I'm testing things. Leave. Yay. So, <laughs> it's kind of cool. Uh, same thing with the ban. The ban will give a reason, and um, I'm going to have a data store that actually takes in the time, a date, uh, the admin, the target, and the reason uh, for the ban. So if the reason's not filled out, then you can't get banned. You have to have a reason for getting banned, and my admins can be like, because I didn't like his hair color. I mean, literally, they can make it for any reason, but it will log it and tell me why the person was banned. So if you, you come back later and you're like, dude, I got banned and I don't know why, it'll tell me why. Um, and then freeze. Here, let's just let's just do a, a freeze. So I'm running, 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 jump, and freeze. <clears throat> oh no, I can't move. What happened? Unfreeze. Freeze. Unfreeze. So that, that's what that one does. Glitch to the sky. So I found out if you take your avatar above 500, um, 500,000 meters, I think it is. Here. Let's go down to the humanoid root part. Humanoid root part. So there's a, a point where your avatar starts to glitch out. One, two, three. I think it's 500,000. Yeah. So as you can see right here, my avatar is starting to glitch at 500,000 feet, right? There is no sky, there's no, there's nothing around. It's, it's the void. Uh, it's not really the void, it's a void. Um, and there's nothing going to be up here at 500,000 feet. So, the next thing is I made mine go up to 900 million. Boink. And that's what your avatar looks like. Good luck finding him. You're just like, what happened? I don't know where I'm at. He's been destroyed. And um, I'll show you, I think it's 8 million. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 8 million is where the glitchiness starts. But at 900 million, like, like the game doesn't know how to keep up with you. Your avatar gets all glitched out. And this is what happens. So, <clears throat> I made a command for it. Um... Why? Kind of like a timeout. Like you don't you don't necessarily want to get kicked and you don't necessarily want to get banned, but you want to get somebody out of the way, pop them up there. And uh, you know, that's that's a thing. <laughs> Become pixelated for a little bit. And then there's always the command to bring that person back to the admin. So, um let's go ahead and set down to 200, 200 is fine. Ooh, I did a nice fast run. Ooh, wait, I'm dying, no. Oh, I must have touched one of the, uh, <laughs> one of the, the kill bricks inside the water. All right, which by the way, this, this still works. Yay running on water and I need to I need to set the ownerships so we need to need to work on that in fact I think I might work on that tonight <clears throat> let me let me go ahead and finish out the rest of the uh, the admin panel -y stuff uh, I'll show you 
this one. Teleport to, I can't really do. Bring to me, I can't really do. I guess I'd have to go into game to do that. Glitch the sky, I did all the rest, right? Yeah, we did, okay, cool. So, and then the exit button, that's actually programmed in there as well. And I could make it prettier, I guess, but for now, that's what I've done uh, to give some kind of control to the admins. Uh, let's go to the admin script. Which one is this one? That's not it. That's the server side. So <coughs> here is the script inside the admin panel itself. The first thing I do is I went through and I created all the buttons and put them in the layout that I wanted them. Um, let's see, enabled and admin panel visible. Visibility, visible, okay. So, each one of these elements, uh, the first part of the panel, uh, first I did a GUI, and then I did a script, and then I did two frames. The first frame just holds the menu, and then the second frame holds the panel. And um, from the script itself, right here, admin menu, admin button, admin equals script.parent, so, Anything that references admin, yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, admin panels. So this is what each one of the buttons is. I gave it a, a, a local variable so I don't have to type out the entire string for each one. Uh, admin menu is admin.menu. Admin menu button is admin.menu.admin button. <laughs> so it's kind of complicated, complicated way of thinking about it, but if you look, admin is the GUI, admin menu is the frame, admin button is the actual button inside the frame. So, um, let's see, right here, admin menu button, I go down here to the bottom and I connect it, admin menu button, mouse button, one click, connect, open panel. So then I came up here and I made a function called open panel. And this is where admin menu dot visible equals false, admin panel dot visible equals true, and then load users. Load users comes down here and it says usernames equals admin panel dot usernames. So <clears throat> on the admin panel, there's a frame called users and it's a scrolling frame. And I said players equals game dot players dot uh, colon get children. And then the Y position is zero. Um, I took a measurement of like where it would look like a button and kind of gave myself a reference of, it was 305 pixels across, 30 pixels big, and uh, I didn't do any kind of fancy fonts or anything. So for each one of the pairs of players, so each object that's inside players at the moment, we create a button, instance.new text button, the button.text equals the object's name, which is the player's name. The parent is usernames, which is our admin panel. The position is new udim, which is uh, a two-dimensional like user interface. It's a it's a, <clears throat> it's like an X Y position with offsets. Does that make sense? So it's a scale and an offset. So any position of one of these, uh, the, like one of the interface things, it has down here on position, blink, X and Y, just like that. So an X position actually has two variables. It's got a scale and it's got a um, offset. Why does the scale go like that? I don't know. Anyhow, the scale, 0.17 and zero. Hmm. The scale is like how large or how relational it is to the offset. The offset itself is the actual X, Y positions. So what I did is I set a new UDIM of 000 Y position, which is currently set to zero, and a size of 305 and 30. And then I did uh, button dot mouse click connect function target equals O dot name. Target is up here. User target equals admin panel dot target. So, um, oh wait. Is that a function? I made a function, didn't I? Oh, look at there. So there's a function, <laughs> a function where we pass in a username and it sets that user target dot text to user. So this is, this is a lot of stuff just for a, a, a menu. Um, 
In fact, this is much different programming than like Visual Basic or C Sharp or stuff like that. Anything with a WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. Um, this takes a, a lot of extra programming. Every button click, every position, every aspect of the interface is something programmed. So, <clears throat> anyhow. <clears throat> so, huge shout out to um, the ones who actually make exploits and the user interfaces that get injected because that's a that's a lot of creation just to get like infinite run or locked character speeds stuff like that but anyhow um which one didn't i have i don't have i've got bring to me i've got freeze i got kick i don't have ban ban i don't think is uh is, is ban created yet Oh yeah, ban is in there. So, uh, if the admin name is not equal to code primate me, then uh, yeah, you can get banned. And a uh, huge, like, to my admins themselves, I check to see if you are an admin. That's the first and foremost thing. If you are an admin, I check to see that your target is not an admin. So there's no admin fighting admin stuff going on. Okay, so admins, Feel privileged. You can't be modded, <laughs> moderated. Uh, check admin. If you do not, <clears throat> if you do not get in there, then oh, I didn't ban. Um, ban. Ooh, wait, hold on. Ban data. There we go. Copy. Wait, we don't have to do that because. Okay. Copy. I'm actually adding the ban to it right now. Sorry, you only got kicked before. <clears throat> ban data. And this is from the person that's requesting it, so it's the admin. And the reason is attempted to invoke the admin remote event so if you see the panel show up okay don't be afraid because if you if you have this panel and it shows up on your game okay the first thing I do is I do a check admin right here okay so we come up here and we do check admin if the admin panel is there we destroy it so it destroys the admin panel before you get a chance to try it if you get kicked, oof, you should not see the admin panel. Because whenever you first connect, we check admin. We check the person that got connected. If you don't, if you're not an admin, the panel gets destroyed. So, for all exploiters or people who are going to be testing to see if they can invoke the admin RE, there's your warning. So. <laughs> Uh, attempted to in invoke remote, uh, attempted to invoke admin remote event set async to uh, ban ID equals player dot user ID so I guess this needs to be admin dot user ID like that is that why it didn't work up here no nope. new ban user ID new band equals game dot players find first child the target so that returns the player data and new band dot user ID and the reason reason should be from up here which gets passed into our admin command new band kick the person because this is set to them with reason band and reason concatenate concatenate there we go okay back over to here so the first part, inside the uh, panel itself, we check to see if there's a target, and if there is a target, then we can do something. If user target dot text equals blank or nil or no target is selected, then <coughs> target or user target dot text equals no target is selected. So it, it checks to see, hey, did you target somebody first? Then you can send the admin command. Next is uh, we invoke the admin RE, which is set to 
admin re equals game dot replicated storage dot admin, which is our remote event. Uh, I should probably call it re, shouldn't I? It's fine. It'll be fine. Uh, open the panel, close the panel. Uh, basically, these two just did the reverse of each other. Um, target, this sets the user uh, user target dot text to user. Load users, I explained that. It basically, it creates the buttons. Um, I should probably load users, like what, every, every 30 seconds or something like that? Hmm. Oh, I, I could make an auto refresh button. Here, let's do that real quick. So, um, Let's see, that's the exit button. Let's go ahead and um, duplicate. And I'm just going to move this down like that. And then I'm not going to call this one the exit button. This one is now called BTN refresh. So we now have a button refresh. And I will change its text. Uh, let's see. Let's come over here. Let's do refresh ASCII character Unicode. Okay, that's the actual code right there. So I'm going to copy that. Whoa. I'm going to come back over here in the text paste. Just like that. Enter. Did that work? It doesn't know what that is. Darn it. Oh, wait. Do I have to change the font? It doesn't use Unicode, does it? I might just have to call it R for now. Let's see. Font. Font. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Where's the button? There we go. Button. Font. Font. Coffin bold Arial. Is it Arial? No, nope, doesn't know what it is. Okay. Refresh symbol symbol ASCII. Okay. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Unicode characters. Uh, you don't need icons. Here are 100 Unicode symbols. Oh, nice. Um, let's see here. Something that looks like refresh or reload. Some kind of code like that. Oh, here's one. Let's see if that'll work. Now what's funny is it worked over here in the text, but it did not work on the screen. Let's see, does that work? That did not work. Hmm. Special characters, copyright, TM. Stuff like that. Weather, pointers. Oh gosh, I'm about to sneeze. And if you sneeze during the video, it's good luck. Ooh, infinity. Infinity symbols. I don't know if infinity is gonna work either, but we can always try it. Button refresh. Paste, enter. Hey, infinity worked. Nice. Do, 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 do. A few notes. Read some articles. There's some comments. Okay, we'll leave it as the infinity symbol. So, what we have to do is we now have to connect this button to refresh this screen. And in order to do that, we have to go back to the admin. And up here at the top, I'm just going to say local btn refresh equals admin panel dot btn refresh. So now that button or this variable is set to manipulate that button. So down here at the bottom, <clears throat> I'm going to say btn refresh dot mouse button one click connect 
and then a function. Nope. We're actually going to call a function load users. Just like that. Oh. Like that. So now that should work, but I'm not going to be able to test it. So let's go ahead and save to Roblox and publish to Roblox. Actually, I probably should have tested that before getting in here. All right. So stop. Um, okay. Yeah. Yep. I did a bad. I did a bad. Hold on. Where's the admin panel? Enabled is false. And that's fine. File. Oh wait, uh, this admin panel needs to be visible now. Visible, nope. File, save to Roblox, and publish to Roblox. By the way, I've been doing a lot of programming that is not the core of the game, like chopping trees and axes and stuff like that. I need to get the admin panel there so I can have some regulation whenever we're in here doing streams or whatnot, and people like, there's a lot of people who are like, oh my gosh, Code, please help. There's somebody bashing you inside here. Dude, I've, I've got no powers yet. Uh, I mean, I could shut down all the servers, but that doesn't help anything. So this way it gives the admins a way of, and, and by all means, I want you to report to Roblox first. I want you to put, the, put in like, this person is doing this in this game at this particular point in time. Do that, all right? Because if people aren't using it, Roblox doesn't know, and they run analytics to see like, hey, how many reports are we getting? How many are true? How many of this is like, and they use that data to actually regulate things. So please, please, I encourage you, report. Um, oh, okay, so we actually need to go into the game now. Um, is there anybody, there's four currently playing. We're going to shut down all servers, kick them all out. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. But hey, you're actually going to be in a video, so. Oh, what is going on with my lighting? It's, it's the, it's my shirt, isn't it? My shirt is too light for my green screen. Hello, wee. So, I know this isn't like straight on programming teaching you exactly what I was doing one, one to one, but I mean, there's a lot of stuff I've been doing, so. Hi, Jack Mods YT. Hi. Hello. Yellow. Oh. Hello. There's LT2 Nutter. Hi, LT. What's up, girl? So, just kind of hanging out. So, if I hit the admin panel, there we go. And you can scroll on it like that. Well, you guys can, but the admins can. So, I'm showing you what the admins can do. Uh, that should work. Let's take a F9, check the server output. Um, let's see, refresh. Refresh button isn't showing anything. So, uh, hello. Mm -hmm. I need to test something, LT. Do you mind if I test on you? Question mark. It's simply the refresh button. Oh, wait. Never mind. I don't need to. Look, new people came in. Refresh. Yay. Never mind. All good. Never mind. It works. So, there are uh, people inside here. I just hit refresh and this actually refreshes the peoples. Somebody else just joined to hit refresh. It should show them. Yay. Now I could put that on a timer, but I don't know how much script is going to be taken. Well, it's, it's server side or it's a, uh, sorry, it's a, uh, it's client side. So it shouldn't, shouldn't take up that much. You know what? I should just put it onto an auto refresh. And then that way, if you want to keep this on, you could, uh, I should make this draggable too. Like, so you could drag it out of the way. That'd be kind of cool. Anyhow, we've uh, we've spent 30 minutes. I've kind of showed you the, the admin panel and stuff like that. Uh, let's see. Jack YT. Freeze. Unfreeze. Whoa, what happened? 
I'm gonna run. Freeze! Unfreeze. Bring to me. Oh, hello. Bring to me. Oh, hello. <laughs> Teleport to. <laughs> Teleport to. <laughs> Ooh, <are> you okay? <laughs> so, anyhow, that's the that is the admin panel that I've created so far, and I've got other ideas and things to do. Um, one thing I really want to get to is a call for help button. Something that will allow you to hit it like once every 24 hours and it'll check the, the data stores to make sure that you're not abusing it. But have it hit once every 24 hours, you can call for help. And on the admin panel, there'll be a list of like which server you're in, who made the call, and what time and date it is. And that should last for like at least a day. So about a 24 hour period that you guys can come and jump in and, and we should be able to get to you. Now, with that being said, there's 10 people allowed in a server at any given time. If I make it where two of those have to be an admin and a eighth or a ninth person joins, upon the person's, the ninth person joinings join, it has to check if you're not an admin it'll kick you out so it has to keep in order for an admin to be able to get to you at all times then you have to have at least two slots open one slot or yeah two slots at any given time so and I'm I'm still working on those things I'm still working on the the axes and everything but I really do, I want to get to the point where you can chop a tree. And I just, <laughs> I mean, I've got it in like three different scripts right now. I've got it in this script over here that generates the, the trees whenever you step on this thing. And that script over here is how to generate the actual trees. And then I got the growy tree at the very beginning that grows. So it's got the growth script, the placement script, and the, um, the branches script. Anyhow, thank you everyone for watching this episode of Let's Make a Game with me, Heath Haskins, Code Primate. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below, do all those cool things that I'm supposed to call out at the end of the video, but it's really up to you. And like I said, um, for any exploiters who think they're going to come in here and start exploiting the game, I do encourage you to try to hit that admin panel. And if you can, if you can get it to work, or if you can like do anything, I also request that you add, like tell me how you did it. It's, it's up to you. I mean, I don't want to force anybody's hand, but um, yeah, anything to help me secure the game uh, against people who would do bad things and wrongness to it, I encourage you. So, thank you all for watching. Love you guys very much. Have a great night. We'll talk to you very soon. <laughs> Outro. Thank you.